Gotcha. So what are some of the things that you need to be paying attention to to plan for your finances to make sure your money is growing and compounding over the years? In this video, I'm gonna share with you the five gotchas of money, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Sapali here, healing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. Right, uh, right around here is a suburb of downtown Chicago. And uh, this episode is actually our first series of Vlogmas. We're actually doing this here in the month of December of 2020. We're committing to 24 videos to do three things. Number one, to increase your financial literacy. Number two, raise your income in the year ahead. And number three, increase the thoughts and strategies that you might have in terms of leadership and personal development. So you can start thinking like a millionaire, you can start strategizing like a millionaire, so therefore one day you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. By the way, if you haven't done so already, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. And if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications the next time we upload our next episode. So therefore you can be up to speed of the things we're sharing with you regarding money. All right, so, 21 years of me doing business, 21 years of me actually helping people, entrepreneurs, people transitioning from the military into the civilian world, people transitioning from career to career, helping them plan for their finances, for their financial future. And oftentimes people have a strategy of financially getting ahead and they think just 401k or just put my money aside, whatever my pension plan or whatever my employer recommends. But that's just part of the game. That's just part of the conversation. You know, in helping people understand how to avoid the pitfalls of the ups and downs of the stock market, ups and downs of what goes on in the world because we are living in a global economy, the pitfalls of just life and the emergency that happened when our health changes or we have kids and we have a family, these are some of the things I'd be thinking about as you plan for your finances, for your financial future. So number one, so one of the first gotchas you want to make sure you avoid, it doesn't matter what type of rate of return or interest rate that you're making, you want to avoid this thing called losses. Okay, losses. You don't want to lose. I think the Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett said, the first rule of saving your money, putting money away, investing money is, do not lose money. That's rule number one. You know what the second rule is? Don't forget rule number one. So when you're making money, making money, making money, don't lose money. Your job is to make money. Your money's job is to make more money and find more friends to surround itself and not to lose. You know, oftentimes people try to chase for the high rate of return, the high interest rate, the high, you know, speculative type of investment. I'm going to get a 20% rate of return, 30% rate of return, 10% return, 50%, whatever. Just make sure you don't lose. So however you're planning for your finances, ask the person that's trying to pitch you on, hey, put your money here, put your money in this real estate, put your money in this Bitcoin, put your money in this Forex, put your money in this insurance, put your money in this stocks, bonds, mutual funds. Ask them one question. Can I avoid losses? Because if you have a negative return, Okay, let's say you have a 10% negative return in one year. You need a 12% positive gain just to get back to your square one. So in other words, if you had $100,000, right, and you lost 10%, you're back down to 90. People think if I just get a positive 10%, my 90,000 will get back to 100,000. Wrong. You actually have your 90,000 earn $9,000 and you're at $99,000. You, you need more than just a 10% return. You need a 12% return just to get back to you to the original $100,000 and above. And the worst part about this, you, what you lost in this scenario, you lost time. So the biggest thing about losses is not necessarily just the amount of interest that you lost or the principal or the previous year's gains that you lost in this particular savings or investment that you're doing, but also you're also wanting to make sure that you don't ask your money to be excessive and be aggressive to potentially lose money in a speculative or risk more than normal riskier type of investment. Don't take unnecessary risks. But if you make sure you have your money constantly growing, 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 you wanna make sure you avoid the pitfalls of losses. The second thing you wanna plan for, which is what H stands for. Number one, gotcha's losses. Second gotcha is healthcare or change in health, okay? The expenses, for example, the guy that built my website, Dustin, he built my website, and he was reading my website, he's watching my videos. And he says, Matt, I think I need to be your customer this time. I said, what are you talking about? I've been watching your videos, listen to your financial conversations, leading to the power of insurance. He says, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. I have four kids. I have two people that I'm responsible for in terms of uh, I employ them. 
and I have no life insurance. I have no coverage, so no problem. He, he gets a conversation with one of our agents about life insurance, about healthcare expenses, and he purchases a policy which has what they call living benefits, and would you believe it? We never thought in a million years, at 38 years old, after 14 months, 16 months after this transaction took place, he, at 38 years old, has a stroke. Okay, now with that being said, medical insurance, medical insurance took care of the airlift, the emergency airlift, the 911, took care of the, uh, the, the health care costs, took care of the, um, the, the stroke rehab. So thank goodness for medical or health care insurance, but didn't care for the expenses as a change in health in terms of the daily bills. So in other words, health insurance takes care of the medical expenses, but what pays your rent? What pays for your kids' college expenses and tuition? What pays for food? What pays for the lights? What pays for your normal expenses of your household budget? Well, you want to make sure you have something set aside, whether a bucket of money or here, or you have some form of insurance policy that has insurance living benefits to make sure you take care of a health care in case your health were to change, where health insurance will take care of your medical expenses, but potentially you might be exposed here because more people today file bankruptcy than any other year file bankruptcy because of whopping and accelerating and piling up health care costs. Big reason why people file bankruptcy. Emergency room, medical expenses, medical treatment, all these different things outside of what health insurance covers, outside of that, boom, piles up on people. And you want to be able to make sure you don't come back from a change in health and you're dealing with cancer, you're dealing with recovering from a heart attack, you're dealing with uh, uh, being uh, hit in an intersection. Uh, a T-boned, uh, uh, you can't get back to work. You want to make sure you have a policy or money set aside to pay for the bills, to take care of your expenses when you're dealing with your quality of recovery. Because if you are thinking about money, you're thinking about recovery, you're thinking about your body, and you get the pressure and stress about paying your bills too as well, it slows down your quality of life and s slows down essentially your health care. It slows down your ability to recover positively uh, without a lot of stress on your mind. So think about it. If you were my friend Dustin and he went through a stroke, thank goodness he had a multiple six-figure income check from the life insurance company to provide for his lifestyle, his quality of life from recovering from a stroke above and beyond what healthcare expenses. Otherwise, he would have had to drain his retirement savings to pay for those at the age of 38 years old. And imagine if it took him 10 years to recover getting back into losses, what he needed to save for retirement, he needed another higher rate of return to recoup the money that was supposed to be there, but that money now, instead of being allocated for retirement planning, is allocated now in his 30s and 40s to allow him to sustain his quality of life, or raising four kids, a wife, a business responsibilities, et cetera. That's why another bucket of money or a proper insurance policy with living benefits is essential to make sure you avoid this gotcha of money. Third gotcha of money, here is taxation. Taxation. So, with a Biden presidency, what can we all expect? Well, Matt, you know, we're just going to tax the wealthy people to make it over $400,000 because that's what Biden said. Correct. He's going to install a tax package that potentially may increase the taxes on people making $400,000 or more as promises his campaign when you voted him to be the president. But on the flip side, you know what he also said? Here's what he also said. I'm going to also eliminate all the Trump cuts they were installed when President Trump was in office. So do you know what that means for the majority of people in the working class and the middle class? Guess what your tags are gonna go to? Up. 95%, we've done some models here with some uh, enrolled agents and some CPAs, and for some of their tax base, I've just watched some of the simulations they've been doing, 95% of all the clientele are going to be increasing what they pay in income taxes if the Trump Cuts Act is eliminated. We got an interesting conversation here with a financial expert coming up here during this vlogmas uh, here in the next week or so of a conversation we had with Curtis Cloak, who for 30 plus years has been helping clients from coast to coast with their finances, with their retirement plan to retire and never go back to a job again. And he's projecting a lot of people, a lot of his clients, because they have this software, this proprietary technology software, a lot of his clients, if the Trump cuts are eliminated, most everybody in the, in the middle class of his clients are going to pay a little bit more in income taxes. So expect taxation to go up. Plus, on top of it, you gotta understand that taxes, for the most part, overall, has been at one of the lowest rates it's been, historically speaking. So, with potentially this happening, with uh, a student loan debt being paid by the government, 
with stimulus checks being paid for by the government, with health care being paid for by the government, guess where you think taxes are going to be going in the future? Lower? The same? Or higher? <laughs> I want to know your answer in the questions, in the comment section below to the question, where do you think income taxes are going to go in the future? Lower? The same? Or higher? Where do you think? Well, a lot of people will bet, drum roll please, higher. So if you're saving for your retirement, you're saving for your retirement, and you're now gonna start withdrawing that money. So it's tax free when it's growing, right? Because it's tax deferred. And otherwise, where you're growing your money, your pension, you're growing your money inside your 401k, your TSP, your 403B, your 457 deferred comp plan, your thrift savings plan, you're working for the federal government. It's, ta- it's growing, there's no taxes on it when it's growing because it's tax deferred. But when you withdraw that money for income, guess what you then pay? Taxes. And everything that you pull out of that thing is exposed to taxation. And if we're potentially, if you believe that we're going to be in a position of being in a higher income tax bracket in the future down the road, you might be whacked in taxes. So whatever you're pulling, let's say you need $100,000. You might have to pull out $150,000 to pay the taxes of $50,000 just to net $100,000. And some of the conversation people are having is, well, Matt, in the future, my house is going to be paid off, Uh, my kids are at the house, Um, blah, 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 blah. I'll be in a lower income tax bracket. I'll be making less money. Uh, I'll be be on Social Security, hopefully. I'll be on 401k. I'll be on a pension. I'll be traveling less. I'll be going to the grocery store less. I don't have anybody to feed and and, and to upkeep. I got myself. I just want to let you know, for most people that are retired, that's a myth. You know why? Back to here. Lots of them now require a little bit more money for health care. And they didn't plan for this gotcha. And now they got to pull money out of their retirement to supplement the quality of life they didn't want. And guess what happens? The more money they pull out of these retirement accounts, now they have to end up paying more in taxes. So if you're planning for your financial future, understand it's one thing to be in tax deferral, but there are strategies out there to be able to withdraw your money without paying a dime in tax, which is either considered tax advantaged or tax free. In a future episode, I'm going to be breaking down the five gotchas of money of where you can find this. So make sure you stay posted. But I'm just going over an overarching financial literacy 101 without getting too much in depth. So I'll make sure I explain it in a future video. So make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Seven Figure Squad. Next one. Next gotcha. So we got losses. Gotcha. Healthcare. Gotcha. Taxation. Gotcha. What's I? Inflation. Inflation. So here's the thing with inflation. If you were to look at 1990, you guys remember the 90s? What the cost of a house was? Car? Raising kids? What was the cost of raising kids? Let's show a quick graph here. What it cost for living in 1990, what the cost of these things were. You see the cost? Okay, let's fast forward to 2019. You see the cost now? Boom! Things exploded, didn't they? From 1990 to 2019, things have increased. The cost of goods and services, the cost of living, have increased over 300%. Gas costs more today than it was in 1990. Going to the movies costs more today than it was in the, if their movies are open, costs more than today than it was in 1990. Cost of a house, cost of raising kids costs more today than it was in 1990. In other words, your money bought more back in 1990 than your money buys today. What's that a factor of? What's that a gotcha of? Inflation. Here's a challenge. Here's a problem. If you think that saving money in the bank is gonna get you financially ahead, or you're gonna be ultra conservative to make sure, oh, I don't wanna lose any money in my 401k, I wanna be ultra conservative, right? I don't wanna lose any money. There's this factor there that says, if I take my interest rate, let's say you're in the bank, and I'm gonna round up with the bank page in terms of a savings account or a CD, a money market account. They're gonna pay you 1%, right? I'm, by the way, I'm rounding up. And you divide that, by, you divide that into 72. It's gonna take you 72 years for your 1,000, in this example, if you had a 1% rate of return inside your bank account, it's gonna take 72 years for your 1,000 to be 2,000. You fired up, you're ready to go down to the bank and open an account. If it took a, if even if it bumped up to 2%, right? It's gonna take you what, 36 years for your money to double from 1,000 to 2,000. You fired up still? Let me ask you guys this question. Do you basically wanna work for the rest of your life? Would you rather retire sooner than later? Well, these are some of the gotchas you have to address when talking to somebody about planning for your financial future, especially in the year ahead. Taxation, 
and inflation combined together with losses and exposure to health care costs down the road can obliterate your financial future if you're not addressing this. And by the way, it goes more than just, oh, okay, I'm just gonna contribute 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks into my 401k. It's gonna go more into what you decide to tuck away into a tax-free Roth IRA down the road that you can withdraw without taking any taxes in a Roth IRA. It's gonna apply more converse, in more in-depth conversation than just that. And last but not least, the last gotcha money, the fifth gotcha money to avoid in your financial future is avoiding this country, okay? This is a country where a lot of dreams go to die. This country is where a lot of talent never realizes its potential. This is a country where a lot of money that's supposed to be earned on your behalf is never made. What's this nation called? It's a nation of procrastination. <laughs> it's a nation of procrastination. Procrastination, there's a famous quote out there, that procrastination is the assassination of your financial destination. By not putting money away, people say, well, I'm gonna get my money right before I start tucking my money away. Mm -mm. Wrong way to look at it. I'm gonna get everything right, I'm gonna get all my bills paid, paid off all my debt, and then I start saving. Mm -mm. Wrong way to look at it. If your money's working hard, paying out to other people to make them wealthy, the banks, the credit cards, the credit unions, right, your mortgage company, right, your student loan company. If all your money is going out and you have no seeds, you got no money planting seeds to make sure you avoid the country of procrastination, your money is working harder for everybody else but you. In other words, you're waking up every day, you're going to your job, you're running your business, and guess what? You're working hard for everybody else but you. So if you ever say, man, I wanna be a first generation cash flow millionaire one day, I just wanna be financially free and financially independent, guess what you gotta do? Get you have to do it. Both your time and money has to be working for you more than everybody else. How do you do that? Avoid the five gotchas of money. Avoiding losses, avoiding unnecessary additional health care costs, avoiding taxation, inflation, and avoiding coming to this destination and getting your passport stamped where you enter the land of procrastination. You don't want to go there. So my suggestion to you is, if you want the following year to be the greatest prosperous year ahead, you gotta get the ball moving. You gotta get the money flowing. You gotta get your money saved and invested and put away, tucked away, so whoever manages your finances, you gotta make sure you address all these. Hey, listen, the person helping me with my financial education, financial literacy, so therefore I can make a smart, educated decision of where I place my finances. By the way, I just wanna let you guys know, I'm not giving financial or investment advice. That's not my job. I'm purely educating you what type of deeper conversation you need to have with somebody that's helping you plan for your financial future. So as I wrap up, guys, uh, a couple things I want you to know. Uh, number one, we're doing this is an inspiration to a vlog miss where every day we're putting up a vlog first to the 24th of December to honor the holiday season the holiday to Christmas season, or every day we're putting up some form of episode to be not only entertaining, hopefully, but also to be helpful when you're planning for your financial future. So if you're also watching my YouTube channel, other different videos, here's a video I wanna encourage you to watch. And uh, I, got a com I got a comment contest, and uh, my mentor released a book called Your Next Five Moves. It's a Wall Street Journal best-selling book. It's, uh, it's actually helped me make $6 million over five and a half years. But I wanna give you his book if you follow this content. So watch this video called Assets Versus Liabilities. The name of the video is right here. I want you to go search this video, click the link or the links below or the link in the description, watch this video. And if you answer this question, we're gonna send you a free book. The first three people that do it, the first three people that drop a comment, they're gonna get a book from me to you who answers this question. What trip did I take in the world to create it a tax deductible trip? What trip did it take across the world to make it a tax deductible trip? Drop your comments below when you watch this video, Assets versus Liabilities. And the first three people that respond are going to get a book shipped from me to whatever address you want me to send it to as a thank you and a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday from the Seven Fear Squad for those of you who are participating in this contest. So hopefully you become one of the first people out the gate to claim and win your free book. So that being said, guys, uh, if you haven't done so already, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you drop your comments below. I would love to know what you're thinking. Uh, let me know about the five gotchas of money. Were you getting caught up in some of the five gotchas of money throughout your, 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 your working life, your business life, your, your dealing with your 401k? 
Uh, if you're watching this on uh, YouTube, make sure you also subscribe to our channel, hit notifications the next time we upload our next episode, and drop your comments below. Let me know also, did you ever get caught up in one of these gotchas? I know 08, 09, the Great Recession, a lot of people got caught up in these different areas. And 10, not only 10 years was lost, but a lot of cash and capital was lost. And my goal here is to help you avoid a lot of worry, a lot of anxiety, avoid a lot of financial depression, uh, a lot of bad mistakes that a lot of people have made that I've witnessed firsthand. So therefore you can be in a position, much better position in the year ahead to be a much more prosperous, confident, happy, and wealthy. And hopefully you decide to say, you know what, this is gonna be the year I choose to plant the seeds and avoid this nation of procrastination. So therefore you can become a first generation cash flow millionaire. With that being said guys, I'm your money smart guy. Thanks for watching and until we meet again, continue live smart, continue love smart, and be money smart today. Gotcha. See you tomorrow.